In today's video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to create client portals using the ZE client portals for Zoho CRM extension. To start with, I'm in a contact and all I need to do is click create portal. Now I select which of my portal templates I want to use. So in this case, I'm going to use the new client onboarding with proof of funds template. You can have as many templates as you like. Here we have the portal preview. This gives us a quick overview of what we're going to ask the client for, where we're going to store the documents. For example, here's a link to the work drive folder where we're going to store the documents. You'll see that this is within the standard work drive folder hierarchy that the system already has because I'm using the Zoho work drive extension for Zoho CRM that automatically creates folders for my accounts, deals and contacts. So in this case, it's automatically putting the client portal folder within the client's work drive folder. It also shows me that we're asking for the proof of ID, proof of address, proof of funds. We're asking the question, why did they choose Acme Accountancy? And we're asking them to complete the client application form. We can open up a full preview, but we'll just go ahead and create this portal. It takes a few seconds to create a portal. And once it's been created, it takes a further 20 to 30 seconds before the live portal is available on the internet. However, there's a 10 minute delay between you creating the portal using the create portal button and the client receiving our email. So there's no chance that your client is going to visit the portal and find that it's not there. Here's the portal email that gets sent to the client. This is generated using a standard Zoho CRM email template. So you're able to edit this and change it as much as you like. You are also able to change which email address the email gets sent from. So in this case, I'm using the organization email address. So if the user replies to this email, it'll go to our team inbox. You can view and edit all of the templates by clicking on the setup cog and then clicking on templates and then the folder ZE portals. And here is the template for the contact, which we've just sent. You'll see here that we automatically pull in your logo and your business details here. But you can edit this as much as you like. You can change the colors. You can change the formatting. Just don't change the link inside this button. But you can change the display text and how it looks. As long as you leave the URL link the same, it'll continue to work. So from here, we can view our portal items so we can see which items we've asked the client for and we can update our items. So in this case, I've noticed that we have this extra underscore at the end of the question. So I'm going to click update item and I'm going to just take that off the end of the question. And actually, in this case, I'm going to add a question mark. Now I'm going to update the item and I'm going to close out of that. So now when we look at this list again, I can see that the name has been updated. All right, so let's have a look at this portal as the client. So if we click here, we can open the portal as though we are the client. You can see here that the merge tags have pulled in the full contacts name. We can also see that it's pulled in the contacts first name here. All this data is set from the client portal template. So have a look at our video on creating client portal templates so you can understand more about how that works. So now we have all of the items. We have the application form, we have a question, and then we have three documents that we're asking for. Because on our template, we've set to show the invoices to this client, they can view all of their invoices from Zoho Books. We have also set to show the client their documents from Zoho Sign. So here, this client can download their signed version of this document, and there it is. Now, what we want to do is we want to upload a few documents here. So you'll see this all comes in from the template and you can put pictures in here, you can embed videos, you can do whatever you like in this space. It's all part of the template making process. So here I'm going to choose my bank statements as my proof of funds and I'm gonna click submit. All right, next let's do our proof of ID. So here I've included photos giving examples of how we want the proof of ID to look and also information here explaining which forms of proof of ID are acceptable to us. So here in this case, we're going to use the driving license. Next, proof of address. In this case, we're going to use our utility bill. 
Then we're going to answer the question, why did you choose Acme Accountancy? So I'm going to say here, I was recommended by a friend. Submit. Finally, we have the client application form. Now this form is built on Zoho Forms and is pre-filled with a bunch of information from the record. I have a separate video teaching you how to do that. So if we click on here, it takes us to our form and it pre-fills with a lot of information. So in this case, I'm going to say that I am employed and I'm going to change my address to 7 New Street and we'll leave the rest the same. There we go. Now the client is informed that there's no further action for them to take at this time. They are able to add more documents if they've forgotten certain things in their document uploads. And we are able to now go back into the CRM and view the responses that the client has provided. Now there's two places. One, here on the contact record, we can click here and on any of these, we can click process response. We're also able to add an item from here if we want to add another item at this point. Otherwise, we can also go to the widget on our home screen. And here I have a custom view showing me all client portal items that are in the stage of a waiting review. So in this case, I'm going to process Susie's items from within her record. So here I'm going to process her response to the client application form. So I'm just going to accept that this has been done. Next, I have her question and answer. So I'm going to accept that. Next, we have the proof of address. So I'm going to accept that. Then we have the proof of ID. Again, I'm going to accept that. Finally, we have the proof of funds. In this case, I'm going to accept number one and I'm going to accept number two, but I'm going to reject number three. And I'm going to say, we can accept your September and August bank statements. However, please provide us with your July bank statement instead of June. Thank you. And now we click submit. Now, Susie will receive an email from us in one hour's time, alerting her that one or more of her documents has been rejected. If you reject multiple items within the hour, then only one email will be sent. So let's go back to the portal and view it as Susie. There we go. So Susie can see that we've rejected it and this is the reason why we've rejected it. So if we click on here, now, in this case, we only need to provide one additional bank statement because we've told her that we already have accepted bank statement one and two. Again, Susie's portal is now showing that there's no further action required. Now, back in the CRM, we can process the final response from Susie. Because we've already accepted files for this item, this blue button appears and says, view previously accepted files for this item. When we click there, we can see that these two files now live inside the accepted folder, inside the proof of funds folder, inside Susie's client portal folder, which is inside Susie's contact folder. So everything is perfectly stored in the right locations for us. If we wanted to, we could click here and see the previous file that we rejected. But in this case, we know that we just want the July bank statement from Susie. So we would check that this is the July statement and we would accept it. Now, back on Susie's record, we can go to her work drive folder and we can see the different items that we've accepted or rejected. So here, this is her portal folder. And then inside proof of funds, we can see we rejected this one, but we accepted these three. If we go into the proof of address, we can see we've accepted one proof of address and for proof of ID, we've accepted one proof of ID. All right, so that's how we work with contacts. You can see here that the portal is now showing as completed. However, we can still add portal items and modify portal. So in this case, we may choose to now come in here and change what the portal says. For example, here we might now say, thank you for providing all of your documents.
we will now begin working on your account. And we can pull in merge tags here if we want to. We can do whatever we like. You can also update this programmatically using workflow rules. And I have videos on how to do that. Now we just click update. And when Susie returns to her portal, she will see that. There we go. So this is the updated portal that Susie can see. Susie's also able to register for an account so that when she comes back here, she doesn't need the special link. She can log in using her email and password that she set when she registered. There is so much customization and flexibility with ZE Portal. I've just showed you how it works on the contact record, but this all works exactly the same on the deal record, the vendors record, and the leads record. There's also so much automation you can do. For example, one of my subscribers has created checkboxes on his deals, and for each of those checkboxes, he's asked for an additional item. As he ticks those boxes on a deal, the system will automatically add those additional items to the portal. So if he's on the phone speaking with a client and he realizes he needs something in addition, he can very quickly tick that box and those items will automatically be added to the client portal. You can also use blueprints and workflow rules to create portals and to add additional items to portals. So one of my favorite use cases of this is when the client fills in one of the forms, you can have a workflow rule running on the fields that get updated by that form. And then based on the response given Given by the client, you can automatically add additional items to the portal. So if on the form the client tells us that they're employed, we can automatically add their pay slips as an additional item. Or if they said that they're self-employed, we can automatically add that they upload their tax return. So there's so much flexibility that you can achieve with ZE Portal. To sign up for a no-risk free trial with no credit card details required, visit zeportal.net today and try ZE Portal on your own Zoho CRM.